The transport shuttle designated Falcon plunged through the roiling reddish clouds of Joran IV with the violent turbulence typical of entering a planet's atmosphere. Inside, the dimly lit cabin was packed with the silent forms of Earth Federation's elite soldiers, their armor clanking softly with each jolt. Among them was Captain Marcus Trent, a seasoned combatant known for his strategic acumen and unshakable calm. As the shuttle stabilized, Marcus rose from his seat, his presence commanding attention. He walked down the narrow aisle, his eyes locking with each of his team members. Listen up, he started, his voice cutting through the low hum of the shuttle's engines. Today we're not just dropping into another skirmish. We're here to turn the tide against the Zaltrax Alliance. This isn't just about survival. It's about changing the course of this war. His gaze lingered on a few of the newer recruits, their faces taut with a mix of anxiety and determination. I know this is the first drop for some of you, Marcus continued, his tone softening. Remember, you were selected for this team because you're the best of the best. Stick to the plan, watch each other's backs, and we'll all come out of this. The cabin filled with a renewed sense of purpose as Marcus outlined the operation. Our primary objective is to secure the eastern ridge that overlooks the Anlor Valley. Intelligence reports suggest it's lightly guarded at dawn. We take that ridge and we gain a vantage point to disrupt their supply routes. It's a simple smash and grab, fast and hard. As the shuttle neared the landing zone, the soldiers checked their weapons and equipment one last time. The air was thick with the smell of oil and metal, a familiar comfort to the seasoned fighters. 30 seconds to LZ, shouted the pilot over the comm system. The shuttle's bay doors began to open, revealing the rugged, alien landscape bathed in the eerie light of Joran IV's twin moons. Marcus clamped his helmet securely, his voice resonant through the team's intercoms. Remember, the Zaltrax won't know what hit them. We strike with speed and precision. We strike as one. On my mark. The shuttle touched down, kicking up a storm of dust. Go, 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 Marcus barked, leading the charge out of the bay. The soldiers poured out behind him, their boots thudding on the alien soil, their rifles at the ready. The battle for Joran IV had begun, and Captain Marcus Trent was at the forefront, a beacon of Earth's defiance and hope. As the team fanned out from the shuttle, Marcus Trent led them swiftly towards the eastern ridge. The terrain was uneven, littered with jagged rocks and sparse, thorny vegetation that seemed to thrive in the planet's harsh conditions. The sky above was a dark tapestry punctuated by the occasional streak of a distant meteor. Echo team on point, bravo left flank, cover and move. Marcus's commands crackled through the team's headsets, his eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of the enemy. The early morning dimness provided some cover, but also made it difficult to spot potential threats. Suddenly, a sharp sizzling sound pierced the air, followed by the unmistakable whir of energy weapons powering up. Contact, 12 o'clock, shouted Lieutenant Dawson from Echo Team. In the blink of an eye, the quiet of the dawn was shattered by the chaos of battle. Zaltrak's drones, sleek and menacing, emerged from their hidden positions among the rocks, their energy cannons glowing ominously. The soldiers reacted instantly, dropping to one knee and returning fire. Marcus sighted his rifle and took down two drones with precise shots. Keep pushing forward. Don't let them pin us down he ordered, his voice calm but urgent. The team advanced, using the rocky terrain to their advantage. Grenades arced through the air, landing amidst the drones and sending shrapnel flying. The sharp metallic scent of ionized air filled the atmosphere as the drones exploded one by one. Sergeant Hayes, a veteran sniper, positioned himself on a higher rock, picking off drones that strayed from the main group. Area clear, Hayes finally called out his voice a welcome sound over the din of residual energy discharges. Marcus regrouped with his team, quickly assessing their condition. Casualties? he asked, his eyes meeting each of his soldiers in turn. Green across the board, sir, replied Corporal Jensen, her armor scorched but intact. These drones are getting smarter, but not smart enough. Marcus nodded, pleased with his team's performance, but aware that the real challenge lay ahead. Good work. Let's move to the ridge. We need to secure that vantage point before they can regroup. The squad resumed their march, their movements synchronized and silent. As they neared the ridge, the first rays of the sun began to light up the valley below, revealing the strategic importance of their mission. From this ridge, they could control one of the main access routes into the Anlor Valley, the heart of the Zaltrak's logistical operations on Joran IV. 
This is it, Marcus thought, tightening his grip on his rifle. Today we change the game. With renewed determination, he led his team towards their objective, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in their mission to turn the tide of the war. The first light of dawn cast long shadows over the rocky terrain as Marcus and his squad made their way to the ridge. The landscape was eerily quiet after the earlier skirmish, the only sounds being the crunch of boots on gravel and the distant calls of some alien avian creatures. Keep your eyes peeled, we're too exposed, Marcus muttered into the comms, his gaze sweeping the rugged terrain. The ridge was within sight now, a formidable elevation that provided a clear view over the valley. It was the perfect tactical advantage they needed, but Marcus knew it wouldn't be given up easily. As they approached the base of the ridge, a sudden, ear-splitting explosion rocked the ground beneath them. Marcus was thrown forward, his vision blurring as debris rained down around them. Ambush, get to cover, he yelled, regaining his footing quickly. The squad scattered finding whatever shelter they could among the rocks and fallen logs. From the ridge above, Zaltrak soldiers began firing, their energy weapons casting brilliant arcs of light against the morning sky. Marcus rolled behind a large boulder, pulling out his tactical tablet to quickly assess the situation. The Zaltraks had the high ground and his team was pinned down in a less than ideal position. Bravo team, suppressive fire on my mark, Marcus commanded, peeking around the edge of his cover to gauge the enemy's position. Echo team, prepare to flank on the left. We need to dislodge them from that ridge. The air vibrated with the sound of gunfire as Bravo team laid down a heavy barrage, forcing the Zaltrak soldiers to momentarily duck for cover. Seizing the opportunity, Marcus signaled to Echo team, Now, move! With practiced coordination, Echo team, led by Lieutenant Dawson, moved out. They used the distraction to their advantage, sneaking through a narrow pass that Marcus had identified earlier as a potential route. The sound of their movement was masked by the ongoing exchange of fire. Meanwhile, Marcus and the rest of the squad kept the pressure up, providing continuous cover fire. The Zaltraks, realizing they were being flanked, redirected their focus, allowing Marcus a crucial moment to reassess and advance. Push forward, Marcus shouted, feeling a surge of adrenaline. He led his team out from behind the rocks, charging up the slope with fierce determination. The ground shook with the intensity of the battle. Energy blasts illuminating the faces of his determined soldiers. As Echo Team reached the flank of the Zaltrax, they threw several smoke grenades obscuring the battlefield. Under the cover of smoke, Marcus and his team made a final push. The sounds of hand-to-hand -hand combat mingled with the cries of surprised Zaltrax soldiers as the humans breached their defenses. After a tense and brutal confrontation, the ridge was finally silent again. Marcus stood, breathing heavily, looking over the bodies of fallen enemies and the wounded members of his squad being tended to. They had taken the ridge, but at a cost. Medic, he called, his voice echoing slightly in the now quiet morning. As the medics rushed forward, Marcus surveyed the valley below. They had gained the tactical advantage they needed, but the battle for Joran IV was far from over. With the eastern ridge secured, Marcus and his team fortified their position, preparing for potential counterattacks. As night fell, the darkness enveloped the landscape, offering a brief respite from the relentless skirmishes. However, Marcus knew that to truly turn the tide in their favor, a decisive action was required. Listen up, Marcus addressed his team, gathered around a makeshift command center set up with portable hollow displays. The Zoltrak Supply Depot to the northwest is the next target. It's the key to their operations in this sector. If we take it out, we cut off their supply lines and cripple their ability to fight effectively. The team nodded in agreement, understanding the significance of the mission. Marcus continued, This is a covert operation. We move under the cover of darkness, minimal engagement. Hayes Reynolds, you're with me. The rest of you hold the ridge and keep their attention here. As the three prepared their gear for the stealth mission, Marcus handed out small advanced cloaking devices. These haven't been field tested under these conditions. Stay sharp and stay quiet. We can't afford a firefight. The moonless night provided an additional layer of cover as they ventured into the hostile territory. The terrain became increasingly rough as they approached the depot, with high cliffs and deep shadows casting eerie shapes along their path. As they neared the depot, the faint hum of energy generators and the occasional patrol of Zaltrax drones became apparent. Marcus signaled for a halt observing the depot through his night vision scope. There's the perimeter. 
two guards at the entrance, more inside. Hayes, take out the guards quietly. Reynolds, you're on drone duty. Sergeant Hayes nodded, taking position. A moment later, the guards slumped to the ground silently, taken out by precise shots. Reynolds, meanwhile, used a specialized EMP device to disable the drones without raising an alarm. With the perimeter secure, they infiltrated the depot. Inside, rows of supply crates and vehicle parts were stacked neatly, a testament to the Zaltrax's methodical nature. Marcus located the central control panel and planted a series of explosive charges, setting them for remote detonation. Charges set. Let's exfiltrate before the notice anything's amiss, Marcus whispered, leading his team back towards the shadows. They retraced their steps carefully, avoiding any patrols that had been stirred by the slight disturbances. Once they were a safe distance away, Marcus pressed the detonator. The night sky lit up as a massive explosion rocked the depot, sending flames and debris into the air. The shockwave was felt even at their distant vantage point. Objective complete. Let's rendezvous with the main team, Marcus said, satisfaction evident in his voice despite the fatigue pulling at his limbs. The destruction of the Zaltrak supply depot marked a crucial turning point in the conflict on Joran the Four. As Marcus and his team returned to the secured ridge, the early rays of dawn cast a golden hue over their armored figures, reflecting the newfound hope in their mission. Excellent work last night, Marcus commended his team as they regrouped. That strike will put a serious dent in their logistics. Now we press our advantage. Before the team could settle, Marcus received an urgent communication from Earth Federation Command. Captain Trent, intel suggests a significant portion of the Zaltrax force is mobilizing towards your position likely in response to the depot strike. You need to hold that ridge at all costs. Reinforcements are on the way, but it's going to take time. Understood, command. We'll hold the line, Marcus responded, his voice resolute. He turned to his squad, their faces marked with the fatigue of continuous combat yet still eager for victory. We've got a wave of Zaltrax coming our way. This ridge is ours, and we're going to keep it that way. Prepare for a full assault. The soldiers sprang into action, setting up defensive positions and checking their weapons. Marcus coordinated their placements, ensuring that every approach was covered. The anticipation of the approaching enemy force was palpable in the air. It wasn't long before the horizon was darkened by the advancing Zaltrax forces. The alien troops moved with a mechanical precision, their armored exoskeletons gleaming under the sun. Marcus steadied his breath, sighting through his rifle's scope. Hold fire until they're in range. Make every shot count, he ordered calmly. As the Zaltrax closed in, the silence was broken by the thunderous roar of Federation artillery in the distance. Marcus's call for preemptive strikes had been heeded. Explosions rocked the advancing lines, sowing chaos among the enemy ranks. Now, open fire, Marcus commanded. A fierce battle ensued. Marcus moved along the line, directing fire and providing support where needed. The ridge became a deadly ground of exchange, with energy blasts and gunfire lighting up the battlefield. Despite the intensity of the assault, Marcus's leadership kept the team coordinated and effective, repelling wave after wave of the enemy. In the midst of battle, a sudden roar overhead signaled the arrival of Federation reinforcements. Dropships descended, deploying additional troops and heavy weaponry. Marcus felt a surge of relief and renewed vigor. Push forward, drive them back, he yelled leading his refreshed troops down the ridge. The arrival of reinforcements turned the tide definitively. Caught between the entrenched Federation soldiers and the fresh forces, the Zaltrax ranks began to falter. Their organized lines broke, retreating in disarray under the relentless human offensive. As the last of the Zaltrax forces retreated, Marcus stood on the ridge, overlooking the battlefield. His team, battered but unbroken, had held their ground against overwhelming odds. The victory was a testament to their determination and skill. Captain Trent, came a voice over the comm. The area is secure thanks to your efforts. Command wants us to push forward. The battle's not over, but today we've changed the course of this war. Marcus nodded, his face set in a grim line of resolve mixed with fatigue. All right, team, let's regroup and prepare to move out. We've won the battle, but the war continues, and we're not done yet. As they prepared for the next phase, Marcus knew that the battle for Joran IV was just a chapter in the broader conflict, but it was a chapter where humanity had proven its resilience and courage, a chapter that would be remembered. Following their significant victory at the ridge, Marcus's squad, bolstered by the reinforcements, 
advanced through the rugged terrain of Jorunth IV, pushing the Zoltrax forces back towards their central command center. The alien landscape, once dominated by the ominous presence of Zaltrax troops, now echoed with the determined steps of human soldiers. All right, team, this is it. The Zaltrax command center is just over this ridge, Marcus briefed his squad, pointing to the satellite images displayed on a portable hollow tablet. Taking this facility will cripple their operational capabilities in this sector. It's heavily fortified, so expect stiff resistance. As they approached the command center, a sprawling complex of angular buildings protected by high-energy barriers. Marcus's tactical mind analyzed every possible angle of attack. Split into three teams. Alpha and Bravo, you flank left and right. Charlie team, you're with me. We hit them head-on and create a diversion for the others. The teams moved into position, their movements silent yet swift. Marcus, leading Charlie team, approached the central barrier. Just as they prepared to breach it using portable disruptors, a massive figure emerged from the command center, a Zoltrax commander, easily twice the height of a human, clad in ornate armor and wielding a weapon that crackled with volatile energy. You cannot win, human, it hissed through a translator, its voice a chilling blend of arrogance and contempt. Marcus met the commander's gaze, his expression unyielding. We don't know how to lose, he replied, signaling his team to engage. The battle erupted into chaos with Marcus and his team dodging blasts from the commander's weapon while Alpha and Bravo teams commenced their flanking maneuvers. The firefight intensified, echoing across the alien landscape. Marcus maneuvered closer, firing strategically to distract the commander while his team used the disruption to advance. Just as the commander aimed a deadly blast at Marcus, Sergeant Hayes from one of the flanking teams landed a precise shot that hit the commander's weapon, causing it to malfunction. Seizing the moment, Marcus closed the distance, engaging the commander in close combat. With each blow, he leveraged his agility against the commander's strength, dodging and weaving through the alien's powerful strikes. As the commander staggered from a particularly forceful hit, Marcus found an opening and aimed his weapon directly at the alien's weak spot, previously identified in their intel reports. With a final pull of the trigger, the commander fell, its defeat signaling a turning point in the battle. With their leader down, the morale of the Zaltrax troops faltered. Capitalizing on the momentum, the human forces intensified their assault, pushing forward with renewed vigor. The command center defenses began to crumble under the coordinated attack. Finally, the energy barriers fell, and the human soldiers swarmed into the command center, securing critical control points and disabling the remaining defenses. The battle was fierce but swift with the Zoltrax forces overwhelmed by the strategic might and bravery of the Earth Federation troops. As the dust settled and the last of the enemy was subdued, Marcus stood amidst the ruins of the command center, his team exhausted but victorious. The capture of the Zaltrax command center marked a decisive victory, one that would severely cripple the alien alliance's presence on Joran IV. Captain Trent, a voice called over the comm, the area is secured. Well done. This victory will be a turning point in the war. Marcus nodded, looking over his team, their faces smeared with dirt and sweat but alight with triumph. This is our victory, all of us together. But stay sharp. We've won the battle, but the war is far from over. As the sun rose over the battered landscape of Joran IV, casting long shadows across the wreckage of the Zaltrax command center, the human forces began their thorough sweep of the area. The victory at the command center had dealt a severe blow to the Zoltrax's operational capabilities, and Marcus's team was at the heart of it. All right, let's gather up, Marcus called out, his voice echoing slightly in the crisp morning air. His squad assembled quickly, standing amidst the remnants of what had been a formidable enemy stronghold. Marcus looked over his team, pride swelling in his chest for what they had accomplished. Today we turn the tide, Marcus began his eyes meeting those of each soldier who had fought bravely by his side. Your courage and resolve have not only secured this victory, but have also given hope to our forces across the galaxy. We've shown the Zaltrax that we will not be subdued. Cheers erupted from the squad, mingled with the fatigue and relief of the morning. Marcus allowed the celebration, knowing how vital morale was to ongoing combat effectiveness. The moment of victory was sweet, but short-lived. Soon, Marcus was coordinating with Earth Federation Command, planning their next moves. The victory had opened new strategic possibilities, 
and there were discussions of pushing the advantage, launching further attacks to reclaim territories lost in earlier skirmishes. As these plans were set into motion, Marcus found himself at the center of strategic meetings, his experience and recent success making him a key voice in shaping the campaign. But even as they planned, Marcus ensured his team was recovering, resting, and resupplying. They would need to be at their best for what was to come. Days turned into weeks, and the momentum continued. Under Marcus's leadership, several more key victories were secured. Each operation was meticulously planned and boldly executed, drawing on the lessons learned from their critical success at the command center. Eventually, word came down from the highest levels of the Earth Federation. The efforts of Marcus and his squad had significantly shifted the overall balance of the conflict. The Zaltrax, unable to compensate for the severe disruptions caused by the loss of their command center, began to retreat from several contested zones. As the formal announcement of their strategic victory was made, Marcus stood before his team and the assembled troops. This campaign has shown the strength of human spirit and our unyielding resolve. Each of you has played a pivotal role in this. We stand here not just as survivors, but as victors. The celebration that night was unlike any before. Soldiers from various units came together sharing stories of their battles, losses, and triumphs. Marcus, though weary, felt a profound sense of accomplishment. They had changed the course of the war, not just for their own unit or even their planet, but for the entire human presence in the galaxy. In the midst of the revelry, Marcus took a moment to step away, gazing up at the stars. The war was far from over, but they had achieved something remarkable. They had given humanity a fighting chance, and that was worth every effort. Tomorrow we continue the fight, Marcus thought to himself. But tonight, we celebrate. For those we've lost, for those we've saved, and for the future we're fighting to secure. With the stars twinkling overhead, a testament to the vastness of the universe they were fighting within, Marcus felt a renewed sense of determination. The road ahead was long, but they were ready. With each victory, they were one step closer to peace. The war on Joran IV eventually reached a turning point with the series of victories led by Captain Marcus Trent and his squad. The Earth Federation forces, now on the offensive, continued to push the Zaltrax back, securing more territories and depleting their resources. The command center victory had indeed been a catalyst for these advancements. After months of relentless battles, the Federation finally brokered a ceasefire agreement, providing a much-needed pause in the hostilities. As preparations for peace negotiations began, Marcus and his team received orders to return to Earth. It was time to go home, to heal and to share their experiences, both to honor the fallen and to educate future soldiers. On the transport shuttle back to Earth, the mood was somber yet relieved. The soldiers were physically and mentally exhausted, their uniforms bearing the marks of many battles. Marcus walked through the cabin, his presence comforting to his team. He stopped by each seat, exchanging words or simply offering a reassuring nod. His leadership, once essential in the throes of combat, was now pivotal in helping his team transition back to peace. Captain Trent? A young soldier, Private Chen, called out as Marcus passed. How do we move on from here? How do we forget? Marcus paused, sitting beside him. We don't forget, Chen, he said gently. We carry it with us, learn from it, and let it remind us of why we fight and what we fight for. We remember everyone we lost, and we make sure it wasn't in vain. Chen nodded, a mix of sorrow and understanding in his eyes. Conversations like these were common as the shuttle neared Earth. Each soldier wrestled with their memories and emotions, preparing to reintegrate into a society far removed from the realities of war. The shuttle landed at the Federation's central military base, where families and media awaited their return. As the hatch opened, a rush of fresh earth air filled the cabin, and the soldiers were greeted with cheers and tears. Marcus was among the last to disembark, stepping down into the embrace of a world he had fought to protect. Over the following weeks, Marcus and his team were debriefed, participated in parades, and attended memorials. The hero's welcome was heartfelt, but for many soldiers, the true battle was adjusting to a life without constant threat. Marcus was awarded medals and commendations, his name and face known across the Federation. Yet he found the most solace in quieter moments, visits to schools to talk about duty and courage, meetings with other veterans to discuss support and recovery, and quiet evenings spent with those who understood the cost of their victory. One day, 
At a memorial for fallen soldiers, Marcus stood before a crowd. The weight of his medals contrasted sharply against the weight of his memories. We fought on distant worlds, he addressed the gathering, not for glory, but for a chance at peace. Let's honor our fallen by living fully and fearlessly, by building a world that cherishes life and freedom. As the ceremony concluded, the attendees placed flowers and holographic tags on a wall of remembrance, each tag representing a fallen hero. Marcus added his own, a tag for Sergeant Hayes, who had perished in the final days of the campaign. Walking away from the memorial, Marcus looked up at the clear blue sky, a stark contrast to the dark skies of Joran IV. He felt a blend of sadness and hope. The war had changed him, but it had also reaffirmed his commitment to his planet and its people. After months of being back on Earth, Marcus Trent found himself adapting to a quieter life, a stark contrast to the relentless pace of war on Joran IV. He had taken a position at the Federation's military academy as an instructor, shaping the minds of future leaders with the lessons learned from his experiences. On a bright, crisp morning, Marcus stood before a new class of cadets, their faces eager and attentive. He began the lecture with a discussion on strategy, but soon, it delved into the ethical dimensions of warfare. In the heat of battle, it's not just about the decisions you make, he explained, pacing slowly in front of the blackboard. It's also about why you make them. Remember, our actions in war reflect our values as a civilization. The cadets listened intently, absorbing every word. The reality of war, filtered through the experiences of someone who had lived it, was far more impactful than theoretical studies. Later, as the class dismissed, a young cadet approached Marcus. Sir, how did you cope with the pressure of making decisions that affected so many lives? She asked, her voice tinged with both curiosity and apprehension. Marcus considered the question, remembering the weight that had pressed on his shoulders during those critical moments. It's about trust, he replied. Trust in your training, trust in your fellow soldiers, and trust in yourself. You won't always make the right decision, but you have to be ready to live with the ones you make, learn from them, and continue to lead. The cadet nodded, her eyes reflecting a mix of resolve and understanding. These interactions, the opportunity to influence the next generation, gave Marcus a sense of purpose that had been hard to find since returning from the war. As the days passed, Marcus also took part in various debriefing sessions with the military command, providing detailed reports of the operations under his leadership. His insights were crucial for developing new tactical programs and for refining the strategies used by the Federation forces. One day, during a routine visit to the Veterans Counseling Center, Marcus encountered a familiar face. Lieutenant Dawson, one of his former squad members, who was struggling with post-traumatic stress. They sat down in a quiet corner, cups of coffee in hand. Dawson, how are you holding up? Marcus asked, concern evident in his tone. It's tough, sir, Dawson admitted, looking tired but relieved to be speaking openly. Some days are better than others, but talking about it here helps. Helps me remember I'm not alone in this. That's good to hear, Marcus replied, clapping Dawson on the shoulder. You're never alone. We all carry our scars, but we don't have to carry them by ourselves. Their conversation moved on to lighter topics but the understanding between them remained profound, a shared experience that went beyond words. In addition to his duties, Marcus frequently attended military briefings and participated in panels discussing future threats and opportunities for the Federation. His firsthand experience and tactical acumen were highly valued in these discussions, helping to shape policies and strategies to better prepare for future conflicts. The war had ended, but its echoes remained in many forms. For Marcus, it was a continual journey of teaching, helping, and learning. The battlefields of Joranth IV were behind him, but the lessons learned there guided his every day, shaping not just his own future but that of the entire Federation.